United States Army. United States Navy. Two branches of the United States military. What sets them apart? What do they have in common? What can they do? Let's take a dive into what you need to know about the U.S. Army and the U.S. Navy. We'll start off the video with a brief introduction on both of these branches. Let's kick it off with the Army. Founded on June 14th, 1775, the US Army is the biggest military branch of the United States. As the land-based branch of the armed forces, its five core competencies are prompt and sustained land combat, combined arms operations, special operations, to set and sustain the theater for the joint force, and to integrate national, multinational, and joint power on land. It preserves peace, security, and provides defense for the United States. Now on to the Navy. Founded on October 13th, 1775, the U.S. Navy is the third largest branch of the United States, behind the Army and the Air Force. It is the largest and most powerful Navy in the entire world, possesses the world's largest aircraft carrier fleet, and has over 290 deployable combat vessels. It serves as the maritime-based branch of the armed forces, with its five enduring functions being sea control, power projection, deterrence, maritime security, and sea lift. All right, you just got a taste of what both of these elite branches are. We got a lot to cover here today. We're going to compare their missions, capabilities, special operations forces, ranks, base locations, entry level training, requirements, and much more. Sit back and relax. If you want to know more about what makes the Army and Navy different, this video is for you. Let's get into it. In the Army, you're called a soldier, and in the Navy, you're called a sailor. These two branches have had a friendly rivalry going on for years. You see it with the Army-Navy football game every year, how they refer to each other, and a bunch of other little jabs they take at each other on the regular. But through all of that, these two branches are both something to be proud of serving in. Let's go over their official missions. For the armies, it is to fight and win our nation's wars by providing prompt, sustained land dominance across the full range of military operations and the spectrum of conflict in support of combatant commanders. The Navy's mission is to recruit, train, equip, and organize to deliver combat-ready naval forces to win conflicts and wars while maintaining security and deterrence through sustained forward presence. To put that simply, these two branches win wars and maintain defense by means of land, sea, and air, with the Army having more of a land-based focus and the Navy a maritime one. You're probably thinking, so what? I know the Army deals with a lot of land, and the Navy deals with the water. Tell me something I don't know, General Discharge. Well, did you know the Army has ships and boats? Yes, even in the Army, you can find yourself around more watercraft than some sailors do. You can even be a diver in the Army. The Army has logistics support vessels, landing crafts, and tugboats. Army watercraft provide the critical link between offshore arrival of combat power loaded aboard strategic sea lift ships and placing that power ashore in a ready to fight configuration. Army watercraft are prepared to deploy at any time into any location. So we said the Navy mainly deals with the water, but there are plenty of sailors who never set foot on a ship. Some examples of these are Seabees, which are the construction battalion force of the Navy, and hospital corpsmen, who can spend a lot of time with the Marines in hospitals or clinics. Your mileage may vary. Some rates are more maritime focused, but you can always find examples of people who did their entire careers away from a ship. As far as opportunities go, while there will be some overlap in jobs, such as combat medics to hospital corpsmen, cooks to culinary specialists, military police to master at arms, and the like, However, in the Army, you will have more combat opportunities than the Navy. Remember, the Army has an infantry, the Navy does not. A large portion of Army jobs have a more boots-on-ground mission than Navy ones do. This isn't to say that some sailors don't go boots-on-ground. 
but depending on what path you take in either of these branches, you have a much better chance to do that in the army. Think about it. The army has tanks and strikers, whereas the navy has submarines, aircraft carriers, and destroyers. Your everyday life and contribution to warfighting will be different in the sense that in the army, you'll be in the field more often eating MREs and food from field kitchens, and in the navy, you'll be performing duties on a ship floating out in the ocean, eating three hot meals a day. As you can probably tell, there's a give and take here when you compare the lifestyle of these branches. We can't stress this enough though, this is an overgeneralization. On a final note for this section, you also have the opportunity to serve in the reserves for these branches. For the Army, you have the National Guard or Army Reserves, and for the Navy, you have the Navy Reserves. Your experience may vary in these, and it will be a bit different than active duty life. It's a great opportunity to serve your country part-time. Alright, we've only just started. Let's continue with another cool part of these branches, their Special Operations Entities. While the Army and Navy may differ a lot as a whole, Special Operations Forces tend to blur those differences a lot more. Soft units have a lot of the same capabilities and missions, but each bring to the table unique specialties and abilities. Let's go over the list of soft entities of the US Army first. They have their Special Forces, also known as the Green Berets, Rangers, 160th SOAR, Civil Affairs, PSYOP, and for their Tier 1 units, the Creme de la Creme, Delta Force, Regimental Reconnaissance Company, and the Intelligence Support Activity. As you can see from that list, there are plenty of opportunities for you to serve in some sort of soft capacity in the Army. If you want to know more about these entities, you found the right channel. We'll point you in the right direction at the end of this video. Now let's go over the Navy Special Operations entities. There are the SEALs and SWICs, which are actually classified as Special Warfare. And then there's EOD, Navy Divers, Air Rescue Swimmers, Navy SARCs, and for their Tier 1 unit, Dev Group, also known as SEAL Team 6. The Navy has plenty of opportunities to serve in SOF as well. Here's the catch though. Keep this in mind if you're debating on joining either of these branches. Remember what we said, the Army as a whole is more boots on ground oriented, so even if you don't serve in SOF, you can still have duties in that ballpark. The Navy as a whole is not much like its special operations, so if you wash out, you may find yourself chipping paint off the side of a boat. Food for thought. Now that you know these SOF entities of both of these branches, let's get into the jobs and ranks of both of them. In the Army, they're called MOSs, which is short for Military Occupational Specialty. In the Navy, they're called Rates, or Ratings. Another big difference between these two branches is how you are addressed. In the Army, if you're an E5, you're a Sergeant no matter what your MOS is. In the Navy, if you're an E5, you will be addressed as a PM2 if you're a Bosun's Mate, or an HM2 if you're a Corpsman. We'll get more into their ranks in a second. The Army tends to have more specific MOSs than the Navy. Here's an example. If you're a 68 Whiskey Combat Medic in the Army, that is your MOS. The Navy's equivalent is a Hospital Corpsman. However, a 68 Kilo in the Army, which is a Medical Laboratory Specialist, is its own MOS, whereas Corpsman in the Navy can serve in that role without having a different job title. With those fun facts out of the way, let's get into the jobs each of these branches have. The Army has 159 jobs, and the Navy has 93. Both of these branches have some of the same opportunities, such as divers, cooks, pilots, and intelligence, but there's a lot of diversity too. You're going to have to pause the video to get a good look at these, as we're going to show you them rather quickly. On screen are all of the Army's jobs. Now, on screen are all of the Navy's jobs. There's a common saying in the Navy, choose your rate, choose your fate. As you just saw, you have plenty to choose from in both of these branches. Now let's get into the ranks of both of them. You'll come to find out that the Navy likes to do things differently. These are the enlisted ranks of the Army, and these are the enlisted ranks of the Navy. As you can see, they differ a lot. Fun fact, the Navy E-4s can be mistaken as a colonel to some in the Army because it looks a lot like it at a quick glance. Can you see what we're talking about? Here are the warrant officer ranks for both branches. These are the service members who outrank enlisted, but fall subordinate to all commissioned officers. And here are the officer ranks of the Army and Navy. The Navy does things a bit different with their titles. 
They, along with the Coast Guard, are the only branches who have different names for their officers. A captain might be an 03 in the Army, but a captain in the Navy is an 06. That's a big difference. And on a last note for this section, the Army's working uniform looks like this. They're called OCPs, which stand for Operational Camouflage Pattern. The Navy's main working uniform is the Navy Working Uniform Type 3, which look like this. Fun fact, sailors can be embedded in Army units and can wear the same uniform as them, except with using Navy ranks. The more you know. Okay, awesome. You know what careers you can have in the Army and Navy, and you know their ranks and uniforms. Let's go over where you can be stationed in both of these branches. We're just going to stick with CONUS locations for the sake of this video. So where can you be stationed? We'll show you now. There's a lot of places. The green dots are army bases, and the blue dots are navy bases. If you get into the finer details, there are plenty of opportunities to be stationed overseas, as well as in other service branches' bases. But we're going to keep things simple for you here. It should come as no surprise that you'll naturally find yourself in more landlocked locations in the army as compared to by the water and the navy. Now that you have a general idea of where soldiers and sailors are stationed, let's go over the training you'll go through to get into these branches. We're going to go over the enlisted and officer side of the house for the training to get into these branches. The enlisted entry level training to get into these branches are called two different things. For the Army, it's called basic training, and for the Navy, it's called boot camp. The Army's is 10 weeks long, and the Navy's is 8 weeks long. We could take up an entire video alone talking about each of these trainings, but just know that the training you receive, outside of the basic military training that every branch's entry level training offers, in the Army you will learn more about how to be a soldier as well as combatives and basic, and in Navy boot camp there will be a gigantic focus on learning how to be a sailor on a ship, even for the rates that will never touch one. Boot camp or basic is only the first step in your career though. There's a lot more training for you depending on your job choice. The follow-on training you get in the Army is called Advanced Individual Training, or AIT for short. This is the training you go to after basic to learn the inner workings of your MOS. And there's also opportunities to get your AIT and basic done all at once. It's called One Station Unit Training or OSAP for short. In the Navy, your follow-on training is known as A School. This is where you go to learn your rate. Further down your career, you may go to a C School, which is a specialization within your rate. Okay, now for officers. In both of these branches, you can either commission through Officer Candidate School, ROTC, or your respective service academy. There are opportunities to direct commission up to 06, skipping the other ranks, but we won't get into that. The Army Service Academy is the U.S. Military Academy, also known as West Point, and for the Navy, it's the Naval Academy. To serve as an officer in these branches, 95% of the time you will need a bachelor's degree. There are limited duty officers, but that's not for this video. For all intents and purposes, to serve as an officer in these branches, you'll need a four-year degree and depending on the career field, maybe even a specialized degree. For example, if you want to be a Civil Engineer Corps officer in the Navy, you'll need a degree in some type of engineering. But if you want to be a SWO, you could get one in underwater basket weaving. Okay, so now you know what training you'll be expected to complete if you decide to embark on either of these journeys. But do you even qualify to give it a shot? Let's see. We're only going to go over the most generic requirements to get into these branches, as there are a multitude of different requirements to get in depending on your career of choice. If you want to be a JAG officer, you'll need a law degree. If you want to be a Navy SEAL, more will be required of you to get that contract than if you wanted to join as a cook. But at the end of the day, there's basic requirements you gotta meet to serve in the Army and Navy. Let's go over them. For the Army, these are the enlisted requirements and these are the officer requirements. Pause the screen to take a longer look. And for the Navy, these are the enlisted requirements, and these are the officer requirements. Pause the screen to take a longer look. Awesome, you now know what is expected of you if you want to join the Army or Navy. Don't go just yet. We're about to wrap up the video and leave you with some valuable resources to go check out about both of these communities, as we can't cover everything in detail in just this video.
In this video, you learn that the Army and Navy are very similar, yet quite different. Both of these branches contribute to the U.S.'s safety, security, and warfighting efforts, and offer limitless opportunities for those who take the initiative to serve their country. There's a lot to these branches, and we could have been here all day talking about them. We encourage you to do more research if you're interested in learning more about them. With that said, if you made it this far in the video, which do you prefer, the Army or the Navy? Let us know in the comments section below. If you want to know more about some careers in these branches, we've done several videos on them. On screen are all the videos we've done on the Army. And here are the ones we've done on the Navy. Yeah, there's a lot of videos for you. The playlists to these will be in the description below. And if you like the versus video format, we've done other videos like this. The thumbnails on screen are the versus videos we've done thus far. The playlist to these will all be in the description below. Well, that is the down and dirty of the US Army and US Navy. If you learned something from this video, make sure to give us a like and subscribe to our channel. As always, thank you for watching. Do you even want to be here? A big shout out to all of our YouTube members and our patrons over at our Patreon. Thank you all so much for taking the extra step in supporting our channel. It is much appreciated. If you'd like to be featured on a general discharge video, consider joining our membership with the link in the description or the join button to the left of the subscribe button, or go give our Patreon a look and join the team. Here's Nick Nausea. All your friends are subscribing to General Discharge and you don't even want to be here.